Many Magic the Gathering players asked the question, is it worth it to buy Blessed vs. Cursed, the new dual deck for Magic the Gathering? Blessed vs. Cursed is a break from tradition, as the spring dual deck usually features two planeswalkers as the foil mythics of the product. But that shouldn't matter so long as the contents have cards of value and usefulness. And of course, if the decks are enjoyable and fun to play against each other. This is often the scale upon which most dual decks balance. Worthwhile while cards, meaning cards that needed reprinting for constructed formats, such as standard and modern, and thus cards that have good financial value, and fun gameplay, meaning that these decks, which were designed to play against each other, are an even match, letting you and a friend get enjoyable, balanced, casual games of magic with one another. Striking this balance is often a hard one, especially since the concept of fun is highly subjective. Given that, let's start with the more determined financial value of this product. As a point of comparison, let's see the current value of past dual decks. Now, I'm only going to look back over the last couple years here. I've examined the entire collection of dual decks in other videos, and an important distinction is that these newer sets receive a much higher printing than some of those old ones. That being said, if you were to buy all the individual pieces for Jace versus Vraska today, the TCG player average price would be about $22.41. For Speed vs. Cunning, $29.26. For Elspeth vs. Kiora, $23.87. And for Zendikar vs. Eldrazi, a set that happens to inadvertently contain many cards that are now seeing both standard and modern play, a whopping $48.52 of value there. As of today, the day of release for Blessed vs. Cursed, if you were to buy all the individual pieces, it would cost you $57.43, but keep in mind this price reflects the TCG player value at the time of launch. Dual decks which have such a high printing drive prices down, and I doubt very much several weeks from now that it'll retain this value. Keep in mind that that $22 Jace vs. Vraska dual deck was worth over $70 upon its release, and that had a Planeswalker seeing major standard play, as well as a reprint of a modern standard. Staple. So what cards of note does Blessed vs. Cursed have? Blessed vs. Cursed contains the following needed reprints and cards of significant value. Geist of St. Traft and... Well, nothing else, really. Just Geist. In fact, discounting the Shadows Over Innistrad preview cards, there are only two cards worth more than a dollar upon release. Champion of the Parish at $1.22, and Gravecrawler at $2.50. And again, these prices will certainly plummet to below a dollar within the next few weeks. If you wish to include the Shadows Over Innistrad prices, whose value is in major question until the set is actually released, only two of those have value value over a dollar. The Foil Mythic Mind Rack Demon at, oh dear, only $2.36? I guess that's not a card people expect to do much with in any format. And Eerie Interlude at $3.93. Geist of St. Traft is a good reprint, but it sees minimal modern play. And after its reprinting here, will likely end up being a 5-7 to seven card for most of the foreseeable future. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not happy to see this as one of the mythics in the dual deck. I actually Actually, I'm very happy that they chose to reprint Geist here, but I am sorely disappointed we didn't see any other cards of value included, especially when we are facing a time of unprecedented high card prices in both standard and modern alike. Which cards could have easily been included in this deck? Well, looking at potential reprints that would have met the theme of Blessed versus Cursed, and which fall into the white-blue-black colors established here, we could have seen reprints of... Liliana of the Veil, Grizzlebrand, Serum Visions, Delver of Secrets, Entreat the Angels, and Obligatory Damnation. I'd also offer this could have included Inquisition of Kozilek. <laughs> 
<laughs> and before you tell me that Inquisition doesn't belong in an Innistrad themed dual deck for flavor reasons, let me point you to Speed versus Cunning, where Arcanus the Omnipotent, a mono blue non planeswalker character, is battling Zergo Helm Smasher, a character that he never met in the storyline because they aren't from the same plane and neither is a planeswalker. How and why is Zergo fighting Arcanus? If you are okay with this, then tossing two Inquisitions, yeah, two, give us two, into the cursed deck would have been acceptable as well and welcome. And had this not been blessed versus cursed, but instead a dual deck featuring two planeswalkers, as is normally the case during spring, I can think of two very likely choices. Liliana of the Veil, as I already mentioned, which could have been included here, and what's a planeswalker that really could use a reprint? Jace, Telepath Unbound. So I think there was a lot of missed opportunity here, and I do not think this dual deck has any significant value. The only card of note is Geist of St. Traft, and in a few weeks you can likely get a playset of this version in foil for the cost of a new dual deck. So what about gameplay and fun? This, as always, is hard to quantify. In terms of gameplay, the two decks are very well balanced, and each have been built with a great synergy energy within them. I would actually rate these as some of the more well-balanced dual decks that have been produced, so that's a very positive factor for just gameplay. Fun, of course, is debatable. For me personally, I would say that these are some of the funnest dual decks in a long while, owing very much to the fact that they create a very strong Innistrad aesthetic, and in a broader sense, a good feel of humans versus zombies. Enjoyable motif, enjoyable flavor, and anyone who loved Innistrad will love playing these, as they really are immersive and you feel as though you really are back on the plane. Actually, during a few of the games that I got with these, I felt as though I was playing an old sealed constructed from Innistrad. Conclusion, excellent gameplay, but unsatisfactory financial value. Thus, I'm going to have to give this an overall score of C plus slash B minus. Anyone looking exclusively for fun, this is worth it. Anyone looking exclusively for cards for constructed formats, this is not worth it. Anyone looking for both? It's okay. I hope very much this video has been of some help to you. Remember, you can't play Magic at Target or Walmart. So whether you are buying dual decks like this, other sealed product, or accessories, try and spend that money where you spend time playing Magic. And that's at your local game store whenever possible. You're supporting your Magic community. Hey everyone, I've added Tolarian Community College coffee mugs to the student store. So if you want a Tolarian t-shirt, a Tolarian playmat, or coffee mug, go to TolarianCommunityCollege.com and order yours today. Yes, I offer full international shipping, and now you can use code URZA, U-R-Z-A, during checkout for discounted shipping.